Hello, greetings. Let's see how this goes. This is uh, me, ex Shia Zahra Jawad, <laughs> on YouTube <laughs> channels 1 and 2, Truth Seeker. So please, uh, this is for the Muslims. Please ask yourselves, are you, do you really believe that Prophet Muhammad was a true prophet and what is the criteria for your belief? If it is the Quran, even the Shias believe in it, then if you say, like, you know, this prophet, anyways, I'll just jump to some things, a scattered brain here and there, and perhaps it'll all fall into perspective in the end. <laughs> In the end, I could leave you with something most important. So, is it the fear, is it the hatred for the idol worshippers that Muhammad put in you and putting it in the Quran because of uh, Abu Lahab, his half-uncle, the idol worshippers, we are told, Gave him a very hard time, that's why perish be the two hands of Abu Lahab in Surah Lahab. So the Sunni, I heard some uh, one Sunni say, tell me, Muslim, uh, Dr. Farooq Ziyamat, that we don't say bad to anyone. Ham kisi ko bura ni bolte hain. That's, uh, so I want to ask, my principal, if she believes in that, or any of you Sunni Muslims believe in that, because that's not true. Ki hum kisi ko bura nahi kehte hain. We do not say bad to anyone. And then the Muslims also believe that uh, all the Sahabas were great and they embraced Islam sincerely, whereas this half uncle, according to the Sunni sources, I've read in Wikipedia or general source, says that both the Sunni and Shias agree. Okay, the Azan is on, I'm going to pause. Hello, yes, the Azan has stopped, but they'll have further prayers. Uh, so there's a silence, good silence. <laughs> so what was I saying? Sorry, I've forgotten. My mind has jumped to if you are a Shia. Would you believe that he's a pro uh, true prophet if you were there? before Imam Hussain's sacrifice. Uh, so I've done a live stream on Facebook and uh, the points I'm giving you now for con the points of uh, argument. No, to ponder over. Points to ponder over. Sorry. So, would you have believed in Imam Ali? Would you have even believed in Prophet Muhammad? And if you don't believe in Prophet Muhammad, this means that you would be a demi. You would be forced to give uh, something in jizya, a tribute to Muhammad for your own good until Karbala comes. And uh, so, and Imam Hussain sacrifice. When I say Karbala in this, when I'm religiously talking about it, uh, the Shias would understand what I mean, but sorry, those non-Muslims, uh, I th think that you're reading my mind, I apologize. So, what is the truth? <coughs> See, on one side, uh, we're looking at it through this Quran, right, first and through, for the Shias, through the Alan Bayt, the members of the household. And the Sunnis say, you know what Ummul Mu'mineen? I mean, the Quran has called them Ummul Mu'mineen. Uh, the Quran has called uh, the wives of the Prophet Ummul Mu'mineen. So this, the Sunnis don't understand why Shias would say some wives are 
terrible, but it is written in their own sources. Because <coughs> they see, I don't know how they see it, but Shia see that Aisha annoyed Prophet Muhammad. It's written in Surah Tahrim. You would say that Prophet, another question, another thing comes up is, uh, you know, the hypocrites, their names were never given, but uh, indirectly they were told, really? Really? Yes, but uh, Surah Lahab, then we find out he was a half-uncle of Prophet Muhammad. And what happened to him? May his two hands perish. And he was martyred in, uh, I mean, for the Muslims he was killed. In uh, jang e -Badr, Battle of Bad Badr. <coughs> So I really have a disclaimer to this uh, Islamic history and the Quran and all this. Anything that comes from Islam. Because now I see what I, if I, if I can put in words to show you, you might, but I have to, you might not believe me. I don't believe myself at times, I recheck. So, you see, Sorry, excuse me, I'm just moving this. Uh, it might make a sound. Uh, so, sorry about that. Hello, oh, this thing, uh, it is coming to me uh, through contemplations, like I said, that Islam is a false religion and Muhammad was a false prophet. Uh, so, it would be better if we corrected ourselves. How he did zul on the idol worshippers of that time, and the Jews of that time, and the Christians even, well, not so much as he did to the idol worshippers and uh, the Jews. And then you would say so many times as that Musa has mentioned <coughs> in the Quran. So, that's really good, isn't it? But, please have a look at this. I know the fundamentals of Islam. I know Muhammad's name is in the Quran. I have given the answer to the challenge of Amina Sardar. I've shown it on my Facebook live stream. This is a revelation sent by Allah. Uh, this uh, Surah Ahkaf, uh, verse and then another verse which I've forgotten where I found it uh, the two other verses which say that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and this revelation has been sent down by Allah to him uh, the nurturer Rabb nourisher so uh, I, I've checked I'm not careless in this I know the fundamentals of my son, but uh, just here I cannot uh, talk about them. So, if you want to see, really see the truth, find out both sides, why would you see both sides? This Quran, when I was going through Surah, I have to again recheck this verse. Right, uh, my mind has gone, like I don't know, it's, uh, you know, the devil hurting me. Um, but, but I tell myself, can you ever be now sure that Muhammad was the true messenger of Allah? Can you be a hundred percent sure? And can you be a hundred percent not sure? So, in both ways, there is no 100%, although the genius ones have left Islam, for them 100% they are sure that Muhammad is not the messenger. I haven't even touched on the Quran errors, scientific errors and all this. Uh -huh. uh, the uh, other errors in the Quran. But I'm just on this and uh, Muslims would raise objections to this. 
Muslims I cannot trust because they say the um, uh, the non Shia Muslims that hum kisi we don't say anything bad to anyone. They don't see Surah Lahab then. See how things escape us. They don't see Surah Tahrim, where the wives are warned, saying that uh, they annoyed the Prophet Muhammad so much that he had to please them. Pleasing them, he, you know, uh, I mean, forbid himself what Allah allowed him, forbade himself, what Allah allowed him, it was allowed for him. What kind of a prophet is he, that he allows himself so much, and uh, the believers have a restriction, although he wasn't even in the battles fighting. The, uh, the soldiers were fighting, shouldn't they get more share than this general? Anyhow, life is upside down, and uh, so you see this book coming from Allah, if it could have been from both sides, I could have understood, this mighty, just, just Allah, okay, there's so much about hypocrites and idol worshippers, disbelievers, like it shows that many were disbelievers. And the punishments after life also for them. Shouldn't we have had a book from the other side to tell us what they believed in? Please pay attention here. This is a very important point. If it's missed your minds, please pay attention. Like uh, when you read Surah Azab, so much against the Confederates. Okay, they gave a very hard time. That's what the Quran says. But have you heard from the other side, the Confederate side? No. Everything you see is coming from those Muslims who won, who conquered Makkah, idol worshipping worshippers. So isn't it unfair of this just Allah to just praise Muhammad in the Quran, just one book from this side? And even the history comes from either the Umayyah side or the, and the Sunnis, you can see they've taken the Umayyads as you know, believers in Islam, very true, sincere believers. And then, or the Ahl al-Bayt, the near of kin, the thoroughly purified Imams, 14 Masumin, infallible, from the progeny of Prophet Muhammad. So I have a thing here quite a challenge. Uh, the Sunni Muslims, there, there was one who wanted to go into Shia Islam. And I was like, no, 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 please don't do this to yourself. What if uh, the Arabs turn to a, a Shia Islam now? Where would I stand? And uh, whatever they may do with me, they may disagree with me, they may still give me a hard time. I will persevere. Hopefully, I pray to that Allah of the idol worshippers that I persevere. So they might not like it, but I love the truth. You see, for security purpose, you might not want to leave Muhammad and Islam altogether. You would want to go to the Ismaili Imam the remnants of, for you, still there, you get a better Islam through Shiaism. So, to find a quick solution to your emotional insecurity, your brain could want to burst, your heart would want to 
God knows, burst also, I think. So in this uh, re religious crisis, anything, Kirne wale ko tinke ki zarurat hoti hai. Amita Bachans. I mean, Kishore Kumar or Rafi. Manzele apni jagahe raste. That song, Indian song. Like the, uh, you know, the falling. Just need a little, uh, the thing, Sahara. Little bit. Tinka is like a small pebble or perhaps I'm not sure but like just guessing goodness so you see but can you ever now say that you are a hundred percent sure that this prophet is a true prophet think about it and so okay so I was thinking that that is at the Surah Shura verses for near of kin to love the near of kin, of the Prophet, meaning. And uh, then, they, uh, <coughs> then they look at the sources and all. So can we ever say for sure that the Prophet Muhammad never uh, did any soul cruelty, never did what Ibn Ishaq has written? against the Bani Kureza. Oh, so about uh, Jangi Badr, where Ghalib Kamal got that from, that uh, the other side, the Muslim side had stopped water. I couldn't find it again in Wikipedia. I'd read it once. But they're saying the disbelievers, idol worshippers, stopped water, were at the well. But what it does say is what Dr. David Wood has been saying, that Muhammad was a caravan robber. And this is mentioned. Abu Sufyan, see, about, uh, on one hand, Abu Lahab, you know, the father of the flame, and it's a whole surah on him and his wife. And a rope, like God brought her. She just got, you know, she was that sheep. She was tied, maybe. And she just strangled herself in the rope. <coughs> so meaning an... <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I have this terrible cough. I mean, it's quite irritating. I just put my glasses on. Oh, so Muhammad can be a caravan. It's in the Sunni hadiths. Uh, the Shias will try uh, dodge this by saying that, no, no, it's not in our. This is coming from the Umayyads. Muhammad took keen interest in capturing Makkan caravans. What? Makkan caravans? After his migration to Medina. Seeing it, as repayment for his people, the Muhajirun, a few days before the battle, when he learned of a Makkan caravan returning from the Levant led by Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, Muhammad gathered a small exped expeditionary force to capture it. Abu Sufyan, learning of the Muslim plan to ambush his caravan, changed course and took a longer route away from Muhammad's base at Medina and sent a messenger to Makkah. Request time, I don't know, on my video that I'm talking on, using why it says after some time, request time out. Uh, sorry, okay, then continuing. Exped uh, where where did I leave off here? Sent a messenger to Makkah. Ch uh, changed. Okay, so Abu Sufyan, learning of the Muslim plan to ambush his caravan, changed courts and took a longer route away from Muhammad's base at Medina and sent a messenger to Makkah. 
asking for help. So this is Wikipedia, sorry. Now those prayers after Isha Azan, prayer call have started. Um, and this uh, battle, this is about the battle of Badr and the, what le what uh, happened and all this on Wikipedia, right? Thank you, Wikipedia. And I'll come back later. Just some points to ponder on. Maybe I'll continue with this later on. I have to catch Muhammad, show you that he was a false prophet. I the burden of proof. And you Muslims have this challenge that they have to prove. Even the Shias I challenge to prove 100% that this prophet was a true prophet. Thank you so much.